Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special session of Q&A Live Ask a Priest with Father Jim Phelan. I am Danielle Bean. Welcome, Father Jim. Glad you're here. Oh, thank you, Danielle. It's wonderful to be here. I welcome. Hello to everybody who's on online with us now, the people who listen to our session later. Uh, it's a blessing to be here to have this time to share. For sure. Yeah, we'll give people just a few minutes to join. If you are joining us, please know that we invite your comments. Even just say hello, let us know who you are, where you're from. Um, but if you have a question or if you have some feedback on the topics that we are talking about here, we would love to have it. And if you are listening to this video later, we'd love to have your comments there as well. You can always leave comments here in um, the Facebook page. We always will come back and check those. We'd love to have your feedback on this topic and other ones that we're going to be sharing here in these sessions. We're doing them every two weeks. So Father Jim, we've been talking in previous weeks about moving from fear to trust. We've really had some great conversations. We've had some great meditations um, at the end of each. And we promise you, those of you tuning in, we're going to end today with a meditation as well. So prepare yourself for that. Um, a nice little moment of prayer in your day. But, you know, Father Jim, today we decided we'd talk about whether or not a pandemic can be God's will. Now, before we can dive into that topic, though, let's, yeah, let's take this bull by the horns. huh? Yeah, <laughs> this is something that really it's a real question for us. huh? <laughs> yeah. Take on a small topic. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's discern God's will here. Um, but, you know, this is something that people are talking about. But before we dive into whether or not a pandemic can be God's will, how we can know what God's will is and all that goes into that. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about where we've been in the past few sessions, moving from fear to trust, yeah. how God is. Collect, uh, calling us closer to him in relationship through yeah. our anxieties and fears that are very real in, in this time and place. Um, maybe you could just recap a little bit of that, let people know where we've been and where we're going with this conversation. Yeah, you know, what we've been talking about um, moving from fear to trust so that we can be walking with God and journeying with God. And uh, we hope that that's where we'll help, help people to move today. And from the starting point, you know, uh, our starting point is how do we grow in trust? Remembering those wonderful words, words of uh, St. John Paul II, open wide the doors to Christ. <laughs> Do not be afraid. It's this call, this call to, to trust in God. So as we've been, we've been working on this trusting in God, now then to be open to his will and to be trusting in where he's leading, knowing that he's the God of life. He's the God who's calling us to the fullness of life. He's the God who's, who's calling us to... Um, walk with him, to trust him. There are times when it's difficult, but we know where this is going. It's going to life. It's going to new possibilities, new horizons, new life. Sometimes difficult. Right. But that's what we're going to uh, consider that some today, huh? Right, absolutely. So I think it's a natural extension from our previous conversations to move into this idea of what is God calling us to now? Like what now, where to from here? And you know, so we, we ask this broad question, can a pandemic be God's will? But let, let's begin by talking about that. Is it possible? I've heard some people say it. And I know you're on social media, so I know you've run into conversations like this as well. Can this pandemic be God's will possibly in a way that he's punishing us for sin, that he's cleansing the world as we know historically has happened in the past? Yeah. Is that even possible? Well, let's, let's, I, I think before we need to get start to get into it, I think we need to recognize something that's maybe unconscious or not so conscious. Uh, we have kind of this, I noticed this kind of two default modes that we slip into when we when, when we have problems. And even for Christians, we do this, you know. Um, one default, mo mo default mode is to blame God. <laughs> <laughs> this is yes. God's fault. God's making me suffer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other uh, default mode is that God's punishing me for, you know, this idea that this God is this, 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 this terrible being up in the sky with this waiting to throw his thunderbolt, thunderbolt down and zap me for some sins that I have no idea what I've done. Right. Maybe neither the case. Maybe mm -hmm. there's another idea. We, and certainly that's what, that's what we'll say. Neither is the case. Right. We want to understand what God's will truly is. The yeah, God of love and what his, what his will is. That's what's really going on. It's the will of the God of love to create and to bring us to full life. That is God's will. Right. So it's still, though, hard to understand how that's happening in the midst of something like this, right? We can see that it's a terrible thing. So I can understand the temptation to maybe assign a simplistic explanation to it, right? God is punishing us. 
it's Donald Trump's fault, it's Joe Biden's fault, it's you know the fault of the way our culture's gone astray or our divisiveness or our, our anger and our, our hate culture. But um, you know, I, I like what you're saying though, because this is a much broader vision that our faith offers us, right? Where mm -hmm. um, God's will is is much larger than that. It's an it's something that we can't you know discuss or explain quite so simply as that. But all of this is tied in with this idea of suffering because maybe you're suffering inside of this pandemic, maybe you're not. But any time that somebody is suffering, that's the question: Why is God allowing it? Right? Maybe you know that He's not directly causing it, but how can a God who loves us allow us to suffer in big or small ways? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's certainly such a rich, com uh, complicated topic, but also a rich, complex uh, topic. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a complicated topic, well, how do we how do we how do we even begin to know where are we going to go? How are we going to understand what God's will is? Well, let's 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 go to where He tells us. <laughs> Let's look at the Bible. Let's look at some biblical sources. And there's some some simple, simple in a in a profound sense, some mm -hmm. some, some threads that we can kind of under, understand to get us to, to move into understanding a bigger sense of what God God's will is about. I mean, it's a huge, complicated universe. So why shouldn't <laughs> God's understanding God's will? We should assume that that's going to be a little complicated to understand. But it's not. I don't think it's it, it's not that. There are some funda fundamental points that we can really. Uh, let penetrate. One is okay. Does God punish? And mm -hmm. does God, is there suffering involved when He punishes? Yes. Okay. Yes, we have to say certainly. There are times what we see in the scriptures that God punishes. Right. There are times when God punishes severely. Um, we can think of the, uh, the the flood. We can think mm -hmm. of the destruction of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. There are cut cases in this in the scripture where we see God has seen that evil has gotten so pervasive. That apparently he has, uh, he seems to. He said, "Well, I'm just going to wipe it out and start all over again." That yeah. does, you know, we there are there are a couple of cases. I wouldn't say this. That's not the modus operandi of God. Right. It, it's um, not the norm. That's not the norm. That that's, there, there is an extreme. Um, but then again, okay, that there are other situations where there is suffering involved uh, caused by whatever is going on and you say well god is god why can't god stop that god can do anything well then uh we have to say well he does permit he permits some things um yeah uh, he uh he does seem to let it happen um but the uh, so we can say that's when we talk about god's permissive will okay. god's permissive will and it's what it's really what God's permissive will is not just, just uh, some kind of philosophical concept. Again, like this God is he's God that's distant from creation and he's just benignly letting whatever happens. And no, but it's much more uh, this permissive will has to have has to do with the fundamental principle of God's will, which is to co collaborate with our freedom. He makes us free. He makes right. us free. So it's about and that. Us free and we, we, and we're going to continue to be free. So. Um, if we look at the origin of suffering, we're going to find about the origin of suffering. It's not God's fault. Actually, God created this great, beautiful, big world for us, and it was not His. It was not His desire to infuse it with suffering. We screwed it up. <laughs> That's such a key point, right? We because so many times when we're frustrated, we want to blame God. Right. We need to recognize. We have messed it up. So let's talk about that. Like, yeah. So what he's, you know, when we screwed it up, ever since then, he's been trying to put, it, he pick up the pieces. Mm -hmm. God's will is right. to pick up the pieces of our, of our mess. <laughs> and yet we're angry to find ourselves in this mess of our own making. But I mean, that said, of course, Father, there are people who are victimized because of the sins of others, right? And they suffer. You know, they might a, a child might suffer in in war or famine or otherwise. That's not his fault, right? And that's not sin or um, problems of his own making, suffering of his own making. And yet it is, how, how can we understand that? That it's God's permissive will, right? I, I recognize that phrase. I'm, I'm the daughter of a philosophy professor. I remember hearing that. Um, but just so that we're, we're, we're careful in how we're talking about this, he's allowing it to happen because he's allowed every human being this gift of freedom, right? Freedom. So we continue to mess it up. <laughs> right. Know? If we stop messing it up, 
<laughs> but we continue to mess it up. So what he continues to have to then, he can't, we talked about this in the last, the last number of sessions. We don't worship a magic wand God. Right. He's not just waving it all over. like Because when he does that, he wipes out freedom. He, if he wipes out freedom, he wipes out me because I'm not no longer, you know, I've got my sins, I've got my messes, but I also have my freedom and he's calling me. So he, the permissive will, he's, he's letting things happen so he can, he wants us to learn. He wants to, to journey with them. So mostly particularly then as we see the, in the, uh, uh, the, Jewish, the Hebrew scriptures, we see how right from the right from the moment of the fall, already he's right there. He's 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 putting in place the the plan what we call salvation history. History begins, and so he then we see the the history of the chosen people is his attempts then to establish covenants. He sets up a covenant, and if I will be your God, you will be my people. You will follow this way, which will be the way in which um, you will find uh, happiness. You will find a new integration. You will be moved moved forward, um, but then they continue to mess it up. Even so, like actually in the in the in, in the Exodus, when God is up uh, giving the the Ten Commandments to Moses up in the mountain, you really get there's two there's two there's two stages in this relate in this the the, the Ten Commandments and, the, and and what God gives to the gives to His people. There's before. The worship of the golden calf. It's like he was really the, the first version of the Ten Commandments and the first version of the Law of Moses. It's like, okay, he, he's saying, just do this, and we'll really start to get it right. <laughs> Moses yeah. goes down the mountain, and they're worshiping the golden calf. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then he starts again, and he puts in another one in place. And so, mm -hmm. in, it's but then so he's working with his people, and just follow this, follow this way, and you will remain within my care. Right. But then when you, people, the infidelity of people is to worship false, false gods, which then puts us in behaviors that put us outside of God's care. And then we ourselves are suffering the consequences of what we've inflicted on upon ourselves. So mm -hmm. God lets it happen until then he gets some way once he can, you know, okay. He, he can pull it back in. He can reestablish the covenant. He can really try to then get people back on the on the track. And that's kind of going through the Old Testament mm -hmm. up until the time of Christ. When then we take a huge and really decisive step, which Jesus himself is this decisive step. Previously, God is trying to, you know, well, suffering, but you're trying to get people back into, back on the way to reduce the suffering and get the relationship right again. Mm -hmm. Now in... Uh, um, with Jesus, God himself comes to take the suffering upon himself, take it upon himself. And he is the sacrificial victim just taking all this sin and the, and, the, and the effects of suffering to then die and then to rise to new life, to open up, open a new level of possibilities. Yeah. Uh, and that's what's open to us now. Now, still, that doesn't mean that we're at the end of the story. It's like, but that's that's where we're going, and he shows us what he what his what how he intends to uh, take us to this new step. Mm -hmm. Not simply just trying to uh, teach us and to, to teach us some lessons and try to get us to behave well, but even more so to really redeem and really transform. Transform. That transformation comes on a specific then route that we need to understand as Christian. It's the way of the cross. Yeah. The way of the cross is this, 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 he says, pick up your cross and follow me. People understand that. Oh, I have to pick up my cross and suffer. God mm -hmm. wants me to suffer and carry my cross. No, he wants you to pick up your cross and follow that cross to this new transformation. Right. That is God's will. We get stuck on the cross though. We get right. <laughs> that's what we need to not get stuck on the cross now in the COVID crisis. The COVID mm -hmm. crisis is not God's fault. Right. He is not inflicting this on us because he's trying to zap us and make us make, make us suffer. That's not what's right. going on. We see it in, 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 from this perspective and from this very clear understanding Christianity offers, that Jesus offers, God offers to the world. This, is, this will be the way through following this way now at this COVID crisis, that's our way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
It's so hard to see that though. I mean, I, you know, cause maybe we could talk about some concrete examples of some yeah. of the things that take us off of that way, right? Because like I can read those Old Testament stories and I remember reading them as a little girl and being like, you know, when Moses comes down from the mountain they're worshiping the golden calf, I'm like, what are you people doing? Right. <laughs> like, it seems so crazy, you know, like they're, of course they're, they're so fickle. And yet I think we fail to recognize the ways in which we worship things outside of God where, you know, you may not be bowing down before your bank account, but are you placing money in a position of power in your life that belongs to God, right? Right, right. There's the, the, the COVID crisis, I think, in the, uh, in the first place. So we have this, we want to get this sense of how God is leading us. But to do that, we have to start where we are and see in the first place, uh, the, God, the Lord wants us to learn some things. And we can see that, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. I have a, a friend, a buddy at the, who teaches, a, a priest who teaches theology at, at Notre Dame. His name is Father Dan Groovy. And he, he say, he, I like to say, you know, he, he says, maybe the world's called, maybe God's calling the world to take a sabbatical. I mean, that's university's terminology. <laughs> take a sabbatical, you know. But yeah. just, um, um, just slow down. Look and see how we really, you know, there are, there are, there is the true God and then there's other false gods like money, power, and wealth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, maybe we all, it's time to look back and th th get to some, so in the first stage to come back to the important things, which is which God is calling us back to him. He wants to call all the world back to, 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 to him. And mm -hmm. so that we come back within his care, his, his circle of care, so that then we live, we re reemphasize uh, community, relationships, relatedness. Well, you know, okay, there's still this, this, this suffering. We're not here forever. <laughs> right. This, you know, death, when, in this perspective, death is not the worst thing that, 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 that happens to us. We are here. At some point, we will move on, you know? Mm -hmm. If we have faith, that's a, that's a, it's hard because we love each other. It's hard to miss somebody when they leave us. <laughs> right. That's, you know, but then, you know, but within this, but uh, simply by, you know, by drawing together, you know, people we've been talking about a uh, friend who is out now in, in uh, Chicago taking care of her, 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 uh, her sister's family because her, the, the father is, uh, is, is has, 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 a, has a disease. That's the kind of the thing that God wants us to really emphasize and see that's what's really important. In life. Right. 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 I think you're so right. And, um, you know, that that's part of what God is inviting us into. Yeah through this time of trial, that anytime we're suffering, I I always try to reframe my mind because we tend to, it's very human, right? To reject suffering of any kind and um, try to avoid it at all costs, right? As our culture will tell us to do, like, just take a pill, right? Just get rid of it. Right. Um, but that isn't always the solution. And inside of that, we need, to, we need to recognize that there is that invitation that God is calling us into relationship with him, mm -hmm. into that transformation that you talk about and that we're not meant to do it by ourselves, right? You're, we talk about carrying the cross of solidarity. Maybe you could just describe a little bit about what. Yeah. That means. So you know that that that's the carrying the cross is like moving through suffering. You know that the, 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 what we call the Paschal mystery from uh, the journeying with Christ through His passion, His death, and His resurrection. Mm -hmm. um, and then he says, carry the cross, carry your cross, carry our cross with him, carry the cross of others. So we share this journey. So we move together. Um, and particularly, uh, so we can see concretely what that ought to mean. We ought to see, and Pope Francis has been really trying to help the world to see this consistently throughout the COVID crisis, solidarity. Mm -hmm. you know? So now we're working on, um, we, need to, we, we need to have a vaccine. And we can have a vaccine. You know, that's... But now is that this vaccine, it becomes, it's this huge global warfare. Right. <laughs> who's going to make the most money on the vaccine? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> who's going to have access to it? And yeah. Right. Instead of, of the nations coming together to think, okay, let's get this together so we can kind of really work on uh, getting a good vaccine. That's the kind of thing the Lord wants us to work on. And then in the meantime, and we see so many people who are struggling because of economic situations. And, uh, and But there are resources. There are resources that we could find just ways in which we can make sure, help people get through the get through the, 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 the some of the pains of the crisis as we move together, this cross of solidarity. Mm -hmm. But God, what the Lord wants us to meet. And when we do that, <laughs> if we could do that, we would we'll move through this thing much more with, with less suffering. You know, and right. we move towards. Uh, you know, then we'll come out of it. Will we come out of it? Will, will we come out of this better, or 
Of course. That was Pope Francis and his uh, audience last Wednesday posed that question, has a beautiful reflection on that. I recommend people go to the go to read his catechesis from last Wednesday. In wanting to encourage us if we to learn, to learn these lessons of solidarity. Right. So that's that's what we're being called to learn here. That's what we're being invited to understand and be transformed by. Um, you know, all of this, this solidarity, this being called to love and serve others. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, this is bringing us right back to scripture, like you were saying at the start, right? With um, some, what the Old Testament prophets told us and what Jesus brought to fulfillment inside of his lifetime, being, being crucified for our sake, giving his life for the sake of others. We're called to do the same thing, right? Be, be supportive of others, be helping others, be reaching out and finding out ways that we can ease one another's burdens, especially during a time of crisis like this. So I think that's really just bringing us right back to where we started from, right? We yeah, were yeah, to this meeting, and really, I hope that we can really uh, keep clear in our heads after, after this meeting. And I know it's hard to remember. Uh, and certainly the world is complicated. The uh, situation of self-suffering are complicated, are complicated, but if we have just have this clarity, Oh, you want to know what God's will is. God's mm -hmm. will is to save. God's will is to transform. God's will is to bring us to new life. So when you're looking and making, as we're making our decisions, as we want to discern what are we, what are we to do now? Um, we want to do God's will, and that is God's will. <laughs> look, follow. Right. Look for what that, what's going to do that. <laughs> That's following right. God's will. Right. Exactly. Trusting in Him. Trusting in Jesus. That's what it all comes back to. And on that note, Father, I think we should end with a meditation like we've done in previous sessions. Yeah. Just um, remind you. It's just simply yeah. going back to be aware now. Maybe it's you, we, everybody is, each person is feeling what they're feeling right now. You know, we're carrying what they're carrying. But let's, let's I'd like people to close your eyes. Just be where you were. Just what's going on inside you now? What are you? What are some of the difficult things that you've been having to having to have to having to carry in these days? Who are some of the people that you're worried about? What you and what you love? Let's kind of as we breathe in and out, try to bring some of those things to mind. Concern now as the kids are going back to school. How's it going to go? Um, concern for somebody who's sick. Concern for somebody who's sick from the COVID, but maybe also concern from somebody else because they're, you know, they've got some health issue that they have to, they can't even get it taken care of properly because things are so confused, whatever. Whatever is weighing in your heart. Take some deep breaths in and out. Exhale. And now with carrying all these things in our heart, I'd like to invite you to breathe in and then breathe out saying inside yourself, Jesus, I trust in you. Breathe in, breathe out, Jesus, I trust in you. Breathe in, breathe out, Jesus, I trust in you. And maybe you might let one thing particularly that's the thing that's most weighing on your mind now. Let that, hold that in your mind. As you breathe in and breathe out and say, Jesus, I trust in you. And as you breathe out, give that to the Lord. Think of whatever it is and just let it go into the hands of the Lord as you say, Jesus, I trust in you. And I'll be quiet now and let you, we'll take a few, few moments and give those things to the Lord. Jesus, you are our Lord. You are our God of love. You are our brother. You are our savior. You are with us. You want to lead us through with you as you take upon the sins of the world. We want you to like, invite us to share that with you by sharing our sufferings with you. Coming close, entering deeply into your heart, 
with Mary and trusting you as we journey through difficulties to new life. Jesus, we trust in you. With you, Holy Mother, we pray over and over again. Jesus, I trust in you. With you, Holy Mother, we pray now. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And may these abundant blessings that the Lord wants to give us, each of us now in our own lives, may they descend upon us to give us the strength, the strength we need. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Father. I'm really looking forward to these sessions every two weeks because they're just, just a moment of respite, a moment of reflection, a moment to put us back on track in the midst of all that we're going through. I wanna thank those of you who've been joining us live. I see some comments here. We can see that some of you have been praying along with us. Thank you so much for praying with us and, and know that we'll be back here in two weeks on September 8th with our next session. Thank you, Father, for the time and thank you for leading us in prayer. Oh, this has been a pleasure. That this uh, it's it's a joy to share to be able to talk about things like this. It's really a blessing. Absolutely. I'm looking forward looking to the coming forward. sessions. We're going to move on to what now, what next, yeah. how we discern in God's will in very practical ways inside of our everyday lives. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here today. Thank you again for your time, Father. God bless you all, and we'll see you soon. Bye, to everybody. God bless bye -bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.